And Kareem, you did it with him too? No. April 19th, 2010. An anonymous French football player was on the phone with a young woman who will soon be identified as Zahia D, an 18-year-old who at one point described herself as an escort and not a prostitute, who's been in the business for a few years. Zahia was totally unaware that the conversation she was having was being recorded. It is still unknown why the player decided to do so, but now a decade and a few years later, we know that he played a significant role in the most scandalous trial concerning French football in the 2010s. Not only that, but the same exchange helped Karim Benzema clear his name from some of the most shocking allegations a professional football player could face. Just a few months before the 2010 World Cup, Les Bleus were shaken to their core by an anti-prostitution probe that involved some of their high-profile stars, the then 22-year-old Real Madrid striker Benzema and Bayern Munich's Frank Ribéry. Both men were facing serious charges, as Zaya was a minor at the time, she was solicited for sex. Panathinaikos's Sidney Govu was also involved in the process, but his involvement was not as serious. Since his alleged contact with Zahia occurred after she was 18, shortly after making it into every breaking news report in the country, the Zahia affair stole every football-related conversation. Many even believed that the 18-year-old vicariously shaped up Les Bleus squad for the upcoming World Cup. But who was Zahia D, really? Why did she change her allegations concerning Benzema, going from admitting to having sex with him to the exact opposite? When and where did the alleged exchange take place? Who was the missing link between Zahia and top-level French footballers? Why did Zahia feel she had to address Raymond Dominic before the World Cup started? And why, even before the trials had started, she had withdrawn her status as a civil plaintiff? Welcome back to Football Files today. We're taking a look back at the Zahia affair and how Karim Benzema got himself out of this boiling mess. Prologue. May 2008. Zahia Dehar is in a suite at the Meridien Hotel at Port Maillot, three months after celebrating her 16th birthday, and also three months after she started working this new job. Some would say that she's a prostitute, but she prefers the word escort, moving to France from Algeria back when she was 10. The young girl had many dreams, but becoming an escort was never among them. The man she allegedly meets at the Meridien doesn't know anything about her backstory, and more importantly, he has no clue whatsoever about her age, because that's Dahar's most well-kept secret. At the time, the age of consent is 16 in France, but prostitution is legal if the worker is over the age of 18. The thing is, Dahar made around 20,000 euros every single month since she started her job, and she doesn't want to hinder her chances of making more by giving out that tiny detail about her age. A couple of years down the road, in front of an investigating judge, she will disclose the details about this very rendezvous, claiming that although she said that the price was a thousand euros, the man who allegedly visited her left half of it and took his leave. That man's name was Karim Benzema. Act 1. The Raid. On 12th April 2010, the Anti-Prostitution Unit of the French National Police, BRP, raided an after-hours bar called Zaman Café. An anonymous informer had tipped the unit about Abu Sofyan, who was suspected of pimping. The raid ended with several prostitutes arrested and with four people indicted. This was just the beginning of a long and troubling procedure that would be of great interest to French football, because later hearings revealed that a few players from the national team were among the frequent customers of Zaman Café, and they also had contact with Abu Sofyan and his portfolio. Zahia Dehar was among the arrested individuals on the night of the raid, and in subsequent hearings she had claimed to have slept with Sidney Govu, Frank Ribéry, and Karim Benzema, while also stating that she was a minor when she offered her services to the latter too. The whole thing could have been a secretly led investigative work, but due to the involvement of high-profile athletes, the fact that M6 broke the news on national television which was then taken up by L'Equipe, and more importantly, because of the fact that Zaya was extremely generous about sharing all the details about her experience, going as far as giving an interview to Paris Match. It became utterly impossible not to know what happened and who Zahia was. While she was telling her version of the story to everyone, Govu, Ribery, and Benzema were doing the same on their end. Speaking to Kenelba, Govu was sad more than anything else. Since my name is mentioned, I can't take it well. 
especially since I have absolutely nothing to reproach myself for. Karim Benzema, in two separate interviews, first with La Sexta, then with RTL, chose not to address the allegations, but the way the media was covering the story. I don't feel concerned by this story. I was not summoned, so the matter is closed. It seems like we're not human beings. This is not the first story. There have been many famous players who have had these problems who were innocent, so there you have it. Justice is doing its job. The justice was going to do its job, and it would end up summoning Benzema. But even then, thanks to the anonymous French football player who recorded his conversation with Zaya, where she said she didn't sleep with Benzema. The Frenchman was more than relaxed. He knew that it was only a matter of time for his name to be cleared off of anything related to the story. But the story kept getting weirder, especially concerning Les Bleus. Act 2. The Letter. A month later than the raid at Zaman Café, on May 11, 2010, Raymond Domenech was answering questions from the media after revealing his preliminary squad for the upcoming World Cup in South Africa. The number of questions a manager can face regarding his squad selection, especially ahead of such a big tournament, is practically limitless. But the very first question asked to the Frenchman was not what 99% of football fans would have expected. Did Zahaya, the escort girl who allegedly sold her charms to several players on the French team, influence his choices? Although his name was not dropped in the actual question. Everyone in the room knew that the question was heavily related to the absence of Karim Benzema. To me, this is not a concern, said Dominic. I'm only thinking about football and about what the players want to give on the pitch. He is a young player, and he still can dream. It's true that the 22-year-old was not Manuel Pellegrini's favorite at the Spanish capital, but he had almost double digits in goals in a campaign where he was not the preferred striker. So for many, Domenech was not entirely honest about the whole thing. The very same day, around the same time, an article was published in L'Express, featuring none other than the woman at the heart of the growing scandal. The outlet claimed to have obtained a copy of the confidential letter sent by Zahai to the French manager on May 6th, five days before he revealed his squad. And Zahaya's alleged letter made everything all the more bizarre, because that's where she urged Dominic to respect the principle of presumption of innocence. I learned from the press that the publication of the statements I made to the police could lead to the sidelining of certain players. I am astounded as much as saddened. I ask you to take no account of what may have happened between some of our players and me. Zahia was openly telling the entire French media that she purposefully hid her age from her clients, and there was no way that they could know that they were seeing a minor. But that didn't really convince the presiding judge about the player's ignorance of the fact. In July of same year, both Benzema and Ribéry were indicted for solicitation of an underage prostitute. Then charges against them were dismissed, only to resurface in August 2012. After a postponement in 2013, the trial of Benzema and Ribéry started in January 2014. By the time that happened, Zahia Dehar was already withdrawn herself from the case as a civil plaintiff, and Benzema and Ribéry were still denying the charges. On paper, both men could face a prison sentence of up to three years and a fine of about 45,000 euros, but in reality, the case could never produce any legal problems for the players. Act 3 the trial. As expected, neither the star players nor Dehar were present at the hearings, and justice was served rather swiftly. After a 10-day-long trial in Paris, the court dropped the charges against Karim Benzema and Frank Ribéry, liberating both men and their names from this utterly bizarre scandal. For people behind Zaman Café and Abu Sofiane, things didn't resolve like they did for the players, though. Abu Sofiane, Georges Farhat, Eli Farhat and Kamel Ramdani were found guilty. Sofiane even had a second blow in June 2015, when the Court of Appeal confirmed his conviction and increased his sentence to three years in prison. Epilogue While French football was going through this soap opera slash legal drama, Zahia Dehar's life was changing rapidly. Before the verdict was announced in the trial where she was the centerpiece, the young woman was already a big-time celebrity, now a fashion designer, the owner of her own lingerie brand, model, actress, and an inspiration for Karl Lagerfeld of all people. With that being said, we're wrapping up this episode. If you want more football-related drama in your life, be sure to check out our previous episodes. Football Files will be back with more.